And joining us now is White House Homeland Security Advisor Liz Sherwood Randall. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. First of all, this clearly was extraordinary work from the intelligence community and the White House. So um, there have to be some some feelings of real congratulations among yourselves for this kind of precision work, uh, including yes, the photo Andrea. we were just referring to. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I was going to say that really the appreciation goes to those who have made this possible, the counterterrorism community across our federal enterprise who have worked so hard to deliver this result to the American people and the world. Talk to me about the precision that was possible to avoid, as you've said, the White House has said, avoiding civilian deaths, preserving the life of his family, and being able to take him out on a balcony uh, with Hellfire missiles that apparently didn't explode the house. Well, the president set a very high bar for this. First, the intelligence had to be developed that confirmed with high confidence that the person on that balcony was Ayman al-Zawahiri. Second, an operation had to be planned and tested to ensure that we could achieve our objectives without civilian casualties. And importantly, that involved ensuring that the house would not collapse uh, with the impact of the weapons used. We also had to do it with no boots on the ground because the president made the decision correctly to withdraw from Afghanistan after 20 years of fighting there. And so importantly, all of those goals had to be met uh, under time constraints that were extraordinary uh, and with complete secrecy to ensure that we could effectively achieve our objective last Saturday morning, last Sunday morning in Kabul, Saturday night of Washington time. How concerned are you that competing elements, terror groups, will now be, with this leadership change, well, now we try to prove themselves, outdo each other, to try to attack Americans successfully. Look, I think that every terrorist in the world has to see what happened last weekend. Ayman al-Zawahiri is dead. Afghanistan is obviously not a safe haven for terrorists, and the United States has the capability from over the horizon to develop the intelligence, to develop a precision operation, and to execute it flawlessly. But John Brennan just emphasized the fact that uh, Sirajuddin uh, Haqqani, the interior ministry of the Taliban government, the man in charge of all security for the Taliban, owns that safe house. And so clearly the Taliban, or the Haqqani network in Pakistan helped get him from Pakistan into Kabul where he could communicate more effectively, send out these videos that he's been sending out. So, Andrea, you know, we were the fully aware. There? We're fully aware that the senior Taliban Haqqani leadership knew of the presence of and enabled the presence of the leader of al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. That's why the president took the decision to take the strike in Kabul, because the Taliban were not living up to the terms of the Doha agreement and because the president made a commitment to the American people to ensure that Afghanistan would never again become a safe haven for terrorists plotting against the United States. You are probably the best expert in this government on nuclear threats, as the former Deputy Energy Secretary under President Obama, responsible for the upkeep of our nuclear arsenal. What are the implications of Pakistan harboring terrorists or helping the Haqqani network move this man from one country to another, a country with more than 100 nuclear weapons that we know of? You know, Andrea, we've worked for decades to ensure that we do not allow nuclear materials to proliferate around the world. We continue to work aggressively on that front today. But these are quite distinct lines of effort. And in this particular case, we are working with the Pakistanis to ensure that we do everything we can to prevent ter terrorists from being located in this region and creating threats to the United States. Uh, and that is part of the ongoing effort that we have to maintain in the region where there are so many challenges. Uh, this morning, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan told Savannah Guthrie that he'd already been in touch with the Taliban leadership, engaged with them over their clear violation of the Doha agreement that said they would not be harboring, you know, giving safe haven to terrorists. Uh, what do you want to see from the Taliban? What assurances could we ever believe from them? Well, you know, importantly, the Taliban have a lot on the table that they need. They want to be recognized. They want access to the kind of financing that would enable their country to function. They want embassies in Kabul from countries around the world. 
when the world sees that they actually made the decision to allow the leader of Al Qaeda to be resident in the center of Kabul in the diplomatic compound, that would cause them to be at risk of losing the very things they are seeking. So first of all, importantly, in the dialogue with the Taliban, they need to be held accountable. That's why we took this strike. And they need to come clean on what they're doing about it. We have work we need to do with them as well with respect to the release of Mark Freerix. We have work we need to do with them to continue the relocation of those Afghan partners who seek to leave Afghanistan. Uh, and so we will continue that dialogue. But first and foremost, we're holding them accountable for a violation of the Doha agreement. And just finally, any message that you have as part of the national security team to Beijing today about their uh, really aggressive threats and reports of live fire exercises and cyber attacks against Taiwan? You know, we've been, very clear. We've, we've been very clear with the Chinese. We're not seeking escalation, but we'll do everything that we need to do to ensure the safety of the Speaker of the House and also to uphold the One China policy. Liz Sherwood Randall, thank you very much from the White House. I know it's a busy day. Thanks for taking time for us. Thanks very we much, Andrea. It.